You might as well face it. You're addicted to camping. We are CampingGearTV.com. I'm your host, Ben. Josh. And is Gary around? Look at that. Gary is sitting in the very product we are going to review today, this massive mammoth pack from mm -hmm. REI. Yeah. What are we looking at, Josh? It is the REI Crest Trail 70. All right. And uh, as you might suspect, that means it's a 70 liter pack. Okay, that's pretty and large. This is the second largest pack we've ever looked at, I believe. It is. Um, unlike the largest pack we've looked at, this is not an external frame. Um, although, it does have uh, that kind of perimeter steady system with like the tubular aluminum yep. going around the whole thing. We looked at a Jan Sport pack that had this similar design. Yeah, I like it. I'm a big fan oh, of it. Oh, I like it too. I like it a lot. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, it, this pack, I'll tell you, 70 liters, but it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like a massive, overwhelming pack. Sure. But you can get a ton of stuff in here. I think you can actually get more than 70 liters in it. One of the really cool features of this pack, let me, let me just show you this. Please do. I'm going off script here. Okay, all right. I'm going off script. What, what was that noise? There was a... <laughs> Oh, all right. Like, let's thought, get down to business. Maybe it was your chair. No, this is the chair. Oh. Yeah. So when I say that you, this can actually hold more than 70 liters, for one, yes, you can strap a sleeping pad here. You can, you know, strap all sorts of stuff on it because, you know, it's got all sorts of places to compress stuff down. Here, here. Do they have a section oh. that you could put packages here. of Big League Chew in? Oh yeah, all that stuff. You can put tons of stuff in here. Look okay. how far out that stretches. So you can get sure. tons of stuff in there. You could unbutton this to get even more in there. Button it back up. Will the Big League Chew button, there? I mean buckle. Big League Chew, you can get a lot of Big League Chew in here. Okay. So on top of all those though, the, the top, the lid if you will, there's a lot of storage in here. Nothing crazy about that concept. You can get in through the back. Get in through right, the back. Right, exactly. Uh, you can actually, there's zippers inside of the top, which hopefully we'll have a shot of, that allow you to actually get into the top of the pack through the lid. So you don't have to take the lid off to get into the top of the pack. Interesting. Which, depending on your situation and how you've got everything set up, could be a feature that could come in handy. 70 liters, you're going out for a, a pretty lengthy trip probably yeah. at that point, and so you're probably taking time to, to load your yeah. pack in a very specific manner, and so that might be something very useful to you. Right. But, okay, and I'm taking a long time to get to my point here. With the adjustable top lid, they, they call it a floating lid. If I loosen these, you can get this lid stuff stuff underneath it. You can actually bring the lid up taller and have even more stuff up in here. You know, so you could really, really, really pack a ton of gear into this thing. Maybe so then get up into the I, 80 liter range. I just think this is pretty legit. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's not actually. just attached to the back and flapping backwards. Right. You know, because you see a lot where it'll be attached at the, at the back and it'll right. flap up and down like this. Yeah. But yeah. This is the first one we've looked at where it comes right. up like that. And let's demonstrate. Let's demonstrate how you get into this thing through the the bottom here. Here we go. So that's through another pocket. I've got this zipper undone. I can get my hand through the top of the lid. Shut so up. That's, could, a, that's a magic trick. I could doing. get. <laughs> that's a magic trick. I could get into the top compartment of the bag if I wanted any of that stuff. So, what, was, what do you nice keep in the trip. top compartment of your back normally? Of or your, your, bag. Pack, or your pack? Pack? The top compartment of your pack, what do you keep in it that you want to get through up there? I don't know. Everyone's kind of got a different style for configuring packs. Uh, sure. Um, me? What, why? I don't know why I would want to do that, but the thing is... Well, I was just asking what, you, what products you kept up there personally that you would like to get out of there. Um, if there's anything that comes to mind that would be... Queso dip? Good. Okay. Which obviously I need my chips too. Right. Probably a six pack of Corona would come out of there with that. Probably some uh, llama jerky. A couple shots of Rumble Mints. Mm -hmm. uh, a dress. There's a good chance that you will have a disposable napkin in there. Yeah. Knowing you. Right. That you would use as possibly a nose boogie receptacle or hmm. possibly just something to a little tidiness after dinner. For the queso. 
possibly. Right. So I'm going to tighten this top lid back down again and uh, talk about some of the other things with this pack. Let me tell you guys, tell us, let me tell you guys something. Really, let me just in a nutshell, here's, here's the big thing about this pack, okay? If you go online, go to, it's only sold at REI, it's an REI backpack, okay? That's how they roll. You can go to REI or you can go to REI.com. Go to REI.com. Check out all the reviews that, that people have written about this thing. They are, they're, they're really fantastic reviews. And you got tons of people on there talking about how it's the most comfortable pack they've ever worn. Um, you, you hear that time and time again. Um, and after using it myself, I, I can't really argue with them. I can't say these people don't know what they're talking about because this thing is very comfortable. Um, in fact, the uh, tagline that REI has for this on their site is that it balances comfort with performance and durability for weekend or multi-day trips. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. you're, you know, it's not when it, weekend or multi-day trips. This thing is going to do very well for the backpacking that 99% of us are involved in and the sure. kind of stuff Ben and I do. Three, four, five, whatever day trips. You know, you're not going to take this to the top of K2 or something, you know. But for, for most people out there, this is going to be an awesome, awesome pack. So if you're on, but because of the size and the adjustability, if you're even yeah. getting past that, up to you know a week, you know, week, two weeks, three weeks, you know, you're hiking a large section of the Appalachian yeah. Trail. Sure. You've got a lot of different areas you can store, a lot yeah. of different types of gear. Oh yeah. You know, the one thing I'd be comfortable using this pack for a lot of pretty hardcore stuff. Sure. The one thing you you that I find that you got to watch when you're using large backpacks, yeah. you know, of this size, 60, 70, 80 liters is that you don't get too crazy with the concept that, oh, I can take everything, including the kitchen sink, and then all of a sudden yeah. your pack weighs 40, 50 pounds. Right. That's not necessarily what I think what people are, or what the designers and what the companies are looking for in an 80 liter pack is that so you can get it up to that much weight. Yeah. You're gonna kill yourself if you do that. Yeah. But there are times where you need to carry, you just need more pockets for more gear, and you just need to plan accordingly, but this backpack. Well, it's like when you when you when you're doing pushing and you want more cushion. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We've all been there. I yeah. can attest to that. So a couple of the other cool things. Let's spin this bad boy around. All right. The back here, you'll notice there's a ton of mesh and padding here, but it's got this kind of what, what they call a sculpted free flow back panel. So you've like got these ridges. Yeah. Bumpiness. There's a lot of little bumps. Like it's a you know foam pad back there, right? That uh, basically by having these little bumps and ridges, it provides less contact with your back, right? And then allows for more of the you know sweat to kind of evaporate off your back, uh, vapor to escape. And uh, they also say that this soft foam conforms to your back. So there you go. The way that this is adjusted for your torso, and there's actually three different sizes of this pack. There's the Crest Trail 65. It's a 65 liter pack. And uh, that fits a 17 to 19 inch torso. There's the 70, this bad boy, 18 to 20 inch. 75 liter, 19 to 21 inch. So it's kind of nice. So Two different size packs for people that have different size torsos. And there's also different size waist specifications. Have you ever measured, let's be honest, have you ever measured the size of your, you know, torso? Um, no. Oh, okay. You just assume that it's a certain size and that's kind of what you tell people? Right. Okay. All right. Gotcha. You're probably pretty close in the description, I think. Yeah. I mean, you know your torso. You see it every day. I mean, everyone's going to, you know, my torso is a, My torso is a little longer than what it really is, you right. know, but right. essentially you're probably pretty close. Right. Gotcha. I think so. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think so. So, uh, all that being said, the way you adjust this for your, uh, particular preference, size, etc., is uh, the shoulder harness is here, the whole thing moves. So there's a ton of Velcro down through behind here, and you can obviously hear me getting at it. So you kind of have to push it all around, and then you can move it up like this. So, you know, if you're a bigger dude, and you can see that you've got markings here for 18, 19, and 20 inch, right? Sure. Yeah. And so then, Put it back down there for now. Now I'm at about the 19 and a half mark there. You know, try it on, make sure it's right and everything. And that adjusts the strap level, yeah. the strap height. Of course, yeah. Adjust all the stuff as you normally would. 
Um, but that's how you adjust with this particular pack. So some other cool things about it. Uh, it's got this active motion hip belt which pivots to follow the, natu the natural motion of your hips. And so I'm going to just put this on for a second to show you guys what... Uh, you know they say that when your back is to the camera or to the audience or yeah. something, you know, they, whatever. What? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully I can uh, demonstrate this. What the heck's going on? Hopefully I can demonstrate this properly and on camera, but if you can see the pack, maybe not. Can you see that? Probably. Yeah, the, the pack the, the pack will, will move independent. So it's not the, the pack and the belt aren't necessarily totally stuck together. Right. Right. So when you, when you lean to the left, your pack leans with you. Well, you, you don't want the pack to just constantly be going in line, you know. It's kind of nice. If, it, if the pack kind of stays at its own center of gravity sure. and isn't pulled down, you know, every step along right. the way and stuff. So this, this whole setup here, you know, works really nice. Can we see that little dance again? This one? Yeah. What about this one? Oh yeah, that's good too. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies enjoy that's that. That's the Pee Wee Herman dance. Right. For all the ladies out there. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. So, that is the... Active motion hip belt, and uh, like I said, keeps the pack balanced and stable. Um, you can see on the hip belt here, lots of padding, lots of mess, right? So it's it's very comfortable, and that's going to help with uh, you know keeping everything breathable. The mesh, obviously, you know, not building up sweat down there. A lot, you know, promotes airflow. As we talked about at the beginning, you've got this tubular aluminum perimeter frame, right? And uh, what they say is that that transfers weight to your hips as well. It stabilizes the pack, helping to prevent unwanted side-to-side -side sway. I'm kind of so, becoming a, a fan of this like semi-exposed tubular frame. I find that the yeah. ones that we've been trying are super comfortable. Right. This one is no different. Right. Uh, it, it, I don't know. It's getting well, to the point where it feels like the pack. Yeah. This is a little cliche, but the pack is one with you, kind of, mm. if that makes sense. It does. And, and so, but it does. like it's a little more, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Do you know who some sponsors of this pack are? Do you mind if I run through Sponsors of the backpack? Well, like some people who use it who vouch for this pack. No. Okay. Rambo? Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. One of the top ten outdoorsmen of all time. Yeah. There, oh, there's a couple in here that oh, do this. Okay. Right. MacGyver? Now, he didn't make the cut. Right. But uh, it was it, top 15, it, by the way. Yeah. But, uh, oh, Mac really? Yeah. MacGyver uses it. <laughs> Uh, John Locke has used this pack before. Brave Little Toaster? Uh, no, no. Oh. Brave Little Toaster, for some reason, didn't even wear a backpack. Really? He's that, he's that legit. What a G. And then, uh... What a G that guy is. Who, who, who's, the, who's the dude? John Locke? No, no, no. no. Oh. Not the philosopher. The guy who, uh... He had his uh, Swiss Army knife, the multi-tool. Mike Horn? Mike Horn. Mike Horn uses this pack, okay? <laughs> what does that tell you? Uh, Do these people know about Mike Horn? Oh yeah, all right, of good. course. Yeah, my, absolutely. My eye itches but, a little here. But the, the thing is, is that it makes sense, right? Because you've got the instead of having like two metal stays down the middle of the pack, which is a fairly traditional internal frame construction. You you know if you've got a perimeter stay that goes all the way around, you're you're kind of spreading the support out, spreading the load out. Um, I like it. But it's a little more compact system and not as bulky as the traditional mm -hmm. external frame. Oh, yeah. I think it's like the perfect no marriage, best of both worlds. And I yeah. think we're going to see companies a lot more going mm -hmm. to this style of pack and this becoming popular, yeah. especially in the heavier leaders, you right. know, the 60, 70, 80 liter packs. Let's spin it around. Also on the hip belts, uh, as a standard, very nice, flexible pockets with zippers. So you can keep candies, treats, and other assorted goodies. Um, so, on the front here, uh, we already talked a lot about the lid. I like it. You can store a lot of stuff, access to the bottom, floating, way up top like I talked about. Totally legit stuff. Let's, uh, let's flip the lid back for a second and take a look at the front loading compartment. So, obviously, you know, like all packs, you've got the option to load 
at the top. And why do I always struggle with, with this? Uh, that locking system? Yeah. It's like your Achilles heel. I, I know. For you, it's like the one thing that can't. But it's like, so obviously you've got the top loading. You can you play with that while I'm, yeah. I can, I'm, I'm like half retarded with that thing or something. But, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's goofy. There you go. You pull and pull, yeah. So, you can get your stuff out of the top here. You know, you can see we've got a hammock, a tent, some other stuff in here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Straps, you know, strap things down. You can go up over the top if you got a ton of stuff. And, you know, bring it down like that. The top loading, so that's the top loading. It also has a front loading component, which is nice, okay? Uh, so you can unzip and get in through there. So you can see, hammock there. You can then unzip the other side and get into this side here. You can see that there is a tent in there. Kind of nice to have a tent when you're out in the wilderness. Sometimes. And then it's got a tang up in the top here. A what? A tang, uh, as you may call it. There's a piece of fabric right here. So it's not, you can't completely open up the front as you've seen with some front loaders before. Okay, but... Uh, Why did they do that, did they say? Yeah, you know, the, actually on their side it doesn't give good detail, but I saw somebody make a really good point, is that that can really help uh, to keep Everything things from getting from, unorganized. Yes, and spilling out the front, that's right. what I was assuming. Yeah, and uh, you know, so I, I think it's nice. I When I'm out doing stuff, uh, I think the option of the front loading, full front loading pack is kind of nice, but I don't use that much. I really kind of, I kind of appreciate this design. Yeah. Personally. Sure. Uh, so for me, cool. I like that you can get in through the front if you want to. I think what they're, what they're getting at is it seems like you can get access to inside the oh, yeah. pack at a, a couple yeah. different points. Yeah. I think what they're trying to do is that they know that everybody has their own way in which they pack their pack. Mm -hmm. And so, if you were to design a front-loading pack and you're, you know, yeah. wanting to get through the top, well, then they're they're not going to be able to market the pack towards yep. you. They won't cater to your liking. This pack is kind of hitting at all sorts of angles. Yeah, uh, I think so that they can, you know, accommodate many different types of uh, hikers and campers. So you can see you got a sleeping bag compartment down here, as usual. Uh, you got some ice axe loops and stuff like that. Um, I guess there's just a lot of people out there wielding ice axes. Yeah. Because every backpack has it. Right. How many ice axes do you own? Seven, but I've never used any of them. Really? I don't own any. No. I lied. When I said that, yeah. I lied. So, uh, anyways, common feature. Obviously, you can do other things than just put ice axes on them. The cool thing about this sleeping bag compartment is that you can actually get through to the main compartment here, too, which I like. I guess you can come up with reasons why you would want them totally separate, but I, I just don't, I don't buy it. I like that you can get through to the main compartment from the bottom because then you've got more flexibility for how you want to configure your gear within sure. your pack, you know? And so then, you it, it's not totally open. There's this kind of, uh, there's this piece of fabric that, that kind of covers the bottom area that's held together with some compression straps, if you will. But then you can loosen that up and take it out if you want. You can tighten it up to whatever you want. So really, you can kind of do whatever you want, meet whatever your preference is with this setup here. Can you fit a small bunny rabbit in there? Of course. Okay, yeah. well then that covers all the bases. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I talks about, I, I talks about. Yeah. How do I recover from that? I don't know. So uh, like, like I told you earlier, you've got these over the top compression straps. You've got a lot of side compression straps, one here, one here. You know, you got straps on the front, straps on the side, lots of straps, webbing, lots of places to tie gear off to. You can tie stuff off here, you can tie stuff off here, tons of stuff. Another cool thing, in addition to these water repellent zippers, is that they, uh, so just like with lots of packs, there's an area for a hydration bladder in the back, right? There's a little compartment deep down in the back here, but you can port it out through either side. Yeah, I'm putting my finger right now. And so am I. Port. Yeah. We both have our fingers in the port. Yeah. So you can uh, have your tube routed over whatever shoulder you prefer. You know, through the pack, over your right or your left, depending on 
Now I you heard, I've, do it. I've seen a lot of people say, I was going to buy that pack, it was perfect, mm -hmm. but the bladder tube came out the right side and not right. the left, and that was just a deal breaker. This thing's made with uh, Cordura fabric, which uh, has really, really been um, kind of a dominant player in the really durable fabric market for outdoor products. But they need to watch years. out because Coco Ney is breath busting on the roof. I think Coco Ney and Cordura are kind of not on the same playing field. I, I think that they have different applications. Probably. I just wanted to say the Coco Ney. Right. Well, where Coco Ney is a, a, a waterproof, breathable. Mm -hmm. for, for apparel. This is extremely durable. Right. Type stuff. Right. You know, do this is not. A, do they have a name as good as Coco Nays? This is not breathable. Right. But you're not going to be inside of it. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But Coco Nay. Coco Nay. I'm just saying, just watch out. Cordura for it. is a pretty cool name, though. It's good. But I'm but just. Man, all I'm saying Cordura is. Cordura sounds like a gangster. All I'm saying is Coco Nay is busting through, and people need to watch <laughs> out for it. That's all I'm saying. You're going to have to go back and watch a past episode to know what's up, but right. I'm sure everyone's seen it anyway. So. Uh, $229, if you, uh, gosh, I, have I said anything bad about it yet? Um, I think 229 generally what I look for right now, if you're at a, a, a 60 liter and under pack, you know, I'm, I, I like the $150 range, but this pack is two, 229 when you start getting the 70 liters and above, I think that, I think that's good, and People, when you see the two things on this pack that come to mind are durability and comfort, and yeah. both are at a very high level with this backpack. And you know, the thing is, I, you know, could you take this out on a one-day hike? Sure, because you can wear anything. You know, is it necessary to carry a pack like this? I don't think so. I think on a one-day hike, you're still going to stick between, you know, 20 liters, maybe 30. Oh yeah. Multi day though, you're carrying a lot of stuff. Let's right. say you know you you want your girl to be carrying the 20 liter pack, so she's got a lighter load, and you're going to carry most of the stuff. Perfect. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. two days, 20 days. This pack is going to be there for you to help you get through it. So when you're paying 229 for a piece of gear, yeah, that's going to provide years and years of use. Mm -hmm. You know, this thing's going to be with you for a while. This isn't yeah. you know this isn't the beds that you're buying and you're trading back in again after you know one yeah. year and 12,000 miles. This thing's in it for the long yeah. haul. And you're, you're going to you're gonna be pleased that you got the pack, I would Absolutely. say that. You know, it's, it, if you've never been to an REI store because they're not in every single city, they are, they're, they're, they're awesome stores. It's awesome to go through there. Yeah. And they actually, if you're not familiar with them, as far as what they make, they make a lot of gear. Not oh, only are they, are they selling other people's stuff, but they make their own gear. And everything that I have ever seen from them is, Oh yeah, yeah. Very, very they're, good. they're not making bottom rung type products. No, they're out. They're it's out there to very, make the best. Very high quality, durable stuff that's going to be high performance and last you a long time. Um, uh, you know what? I didn't spend much time on these uh, these uh, you know harnesses, shoulder straps here. EVA padding, probably. Yeah, you got your EVA and stuff. Some nice mesh. You know, nice lot of areas to strap stuff onto. Um, you know, easily clip carabiners, and uh, as if as if there wasn't enough, there's a whistle on the sternum strap. Right. I mean, that just basically says it all. I don't want to do that too often because right. there's. I, I heard that there's a small chinchilla. Yes. In the house. There is, and we and don't want to disturb it. Yeah. You know, so. whistles nail chinchillas really yeah. bad. So. So that's that's the pack. You're definitely yeah. going to want to get your hands on this if you're in the mar if you're in the market to purchase a large leader pack. No one else is important to bring up about REI. What? If you're in the market to purchase a pack, but maybe you're just kind of getting into it, REI is a really great place to go because the people that work there know a lot about right, yeah. what they're talking they about. Do. They can help get you fitted, help you know try on some different packs, figure out what's right for you, for what you're doing, for your body type. Very knowledgeable people. I think a lot of times people might try and shy away from REI because they're dealing in the higher end and they think they're they're selling more pricier stuff. And I I think that if you want the best gear, the priciest gear, REI is going to have it. But they definitely carry a lot of gear that is very very oh well, you yeah. know affordable yeah you know, and, and definitely will have stuff for people just entering yeah. you know 
uh, the market. And so really, sure. really good place to go check out, like Josh said, very knowledgeable people. So yes, going to definitely want to get over to REI, REI.com. Yeah. Go check those people out. So, but we hope you have enjoyed this episode. I really like talking with you of this episode. I've enjoyed it as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, what was a personal highlight for me was just the discussion about your torso length. I enjoyed very much. So come back next time when we discuss our foot sizes. But until then, he's Josh, he's Gary, I'm Ben. We are CampingGearTV.com.